Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're gonna to work on programming the 705. This is going to be a different twist. ICOM provides some software for you that will allow you to program all of its memory channels on the computer, but I'm gonna do it the TO way. That's right, it's going on Linux. So Windows software running under Wine, running under Linux Mint on an old Dell laptop. Let's get to it. First thing we're gonna to need to do is some magic. We're gonna to go to a command prompt and we're going to install Wine. It's really not hard to install software on Linux. It's actually fairly easy, especially on Ubuntu, but all Linux operating systems have some type of package manager on CentOS or Fedora or Red Hat. It's DNF on Ubuntu flavors of Linux. It is apt and on other flavors of Linux, it might be Pac-Man, it might be installing it, compiling it from source, but a lot of us use Ubuntu, and Ubuntu is what is on the Raspberry Pi. You can't do this on Raspberry Pi, though, because it doesn't have the same processor as most Windows machines run on. ICOM wrote this for x86 architecture, and the Pi is not an x86 machine. sudo apt install wine. Yes, I want to install all the stuff I just asked you to install. Let's go grab the software from the ICOM website. Pull up your favorite web browser and let's go to support. And then we're going to click on firmware software. And then I'm going to type in IC dash, I'm going to spell it right, 705. And then I want the CS705 software. As of the time of recording this version 121 from 1222-2022 is the latest, which is a couple of days ago. I have to agree to download the thing that I clicked on to download. Let's do it. It's going to ask me where to put it. I'm going to put it in my downloads folder. Okay, so I want to go into my downloads folder. And I happen to know that ICOM packaged the program inside of a folder inside of the zip file. So I can just unzip it right into the current folder. Unzip. And I want to unzip the CS705 file that we downloaded. And I want to change into that folder. And then from here, I want to run wine and setup.exe. There we go. All right, let's pick a language, English or Japanese. And then let's hit next. And then let's hit next and pick the default folder, which is fine. And then setup has finished installing CS705 on your computer. And it's kind of blurry for me too. Let me get our command prompt back. A couple of things that we need to do here. One is we need to make sure that we are in the dialogue group. If you're already running WSJTX FT8 software on your machine, then you probably are already in the dialogue group, but it's not gonna hurt to add yourself a second time because Linux is smart enough to not do that for you. And the command for that is sudo add user dollar user, which is a variable from the environment, which is going to have your username into it, dial out. And you press enter and it says, Steve is already a member of the dialogue group. Told you it was smart. And then next we need to reboot the machine so that Wine can figure out all of the devices that need to be figured out. Make sure that your ICOM 705 is turned on when you do this reboot. And we're back. So if we open up a command prompt and we go to our home directory and we change into the .wine slash DOS devices folder, we can see where everything is connected. The ICOM 705 shows up as this TTY ACM0 and ACM1 port and they are mapped to COM33 and COM34, remember that. You'll see on the desktop there is this new CS705 icon. Let's go ahead and run that thing and let's see if the search function works. It's gonna ask you where the radio is connected. We're gonna try and search for it. And that did not work. That's okay, because we know that it's COM33 or COM34. So let's choose 33 and hit OK. And then the first thing we want to do is we want to try and read from the radio, which is this icon right here that has the computer with the arrow pointing into it. And we're cloning from the radio. No settings needed other than picking the right COM port. And if you look at your IC705, it'll have this really neat little cloning icon display thing going on. It's pretty cool. Now we've got it open, we need to add some channels. So I am going to go into my memory channel and these are the channels that I have read in. I have a group for the Westchester, Ohio repeater and the Yoda Camp simplex frequency for when Yoda Camp is at the Voice of America Radio Museum. And then I also decided to plug in all of my marine VHF frequencies in here. Let's add another group and it's gonna be called O2. Edit name. And I'm gonna call this GMRS. 
And under GMRS, I want to put in all of my GMRS frequencies. The radio can't transmit on GMRS frequencies, but it would be nice to monitor them with one radio. And then if somebody did start talking, I could pick up my GMRS radio and start talking to them on that. My friends over at Redivis have created a GMRS frequency chart. And GMRS and FRS have kind of an overlap in frequencies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in one, and then I'm going to show you how to write it out to the radio, and I'll do the rest later on. But the procedure is the same for more than one. So the first one is 462.5, 62.5. And then the operating frequency is 462.5, 62.5. Five. We got to do a bunch of other stuff too. So mode is going to be FM. Okay, now I've got all of the GMRS frequencies entered into my GMRS group and the FRS frequencies too, but we're not going to talk about those. So the next thing I want to do is I want to save this locally. I'm going to save it someplace that I know. So I'm going to stick it on the desktop for now. And I'm going to call this CS705 KM9. G, and then it'll save it as an ICF file. Old data files, ICOM 705. Is there a new version of the data file format? Yeah, there's a new version. I don't have an older version of the software, so I'm gonna use the new version of the software. Done, saved. So I always wanna have a local copy and a copy on my radio in case anything gets corrupted. So the next thing I wanna do is I want to write to the radio, and I'm not gonna change the ref adjust. I'm not gonna change any of these other settings here because these are settings. Let's, let's show you those. Here we go. So there is a ton of extra settings in this software that you can mess with for your radio before you go through and upload it to the radio itself. So this might be an easier way for you to edit some of your more common features. Have a lot of fun playing around in this. Worst case scenario, you'll have to factory reset your radio and figure out what you messed up. But that's the fun of amateur radio. So I'm gonna go ahead and write. And I'm gonna leave this ref adjust unchecked. I'm gonna hit okay. And we're writing and fancy icon on the display of the radio fancy animation. And when it's done, it asks you to push the power button on the front of the radio. So I'm going to power off the radio and power it back on. And this way it'll pick up all of the new settings that we just made. Okay, folks, there you have it. Not all that difficult to do. I was actually kind of surprised that the ICOM software ran underneath of Wine on Linux, but it does, and it programs the radio. It does the thing. So that is pretty cool. Make sure that you have all of your information written down that you want to program in. So your frequency, your offset, your tones, all that kind of fancy stuff. Have kind of a plan. I wanted to be able to scan marine VHF when I'm near the water and when it's bear hunting season here. And I wanted to be able to scan GMRS channels individually as... I feel like scanning GMRS to see if anybody's on GMRS. And then if you have your favorite, you know, like the Maritime Mobile Net on 14300, you know, the Breakfast Club on 80 meters, stuff like that, you can program that in here and have at it. Again, there's a bunch of extra features in there. Make sure that your computer is fully up to date with all the latest updates. So sudo apt-get update, sudo apt-get upgrade. Make sure that your radio is on the latest version of the firmware and make sure you have the latest version of the software. There is a list of the commands that I use to install this. There's like five of them in the description down below. Don't feel like I you know, went too fast or anything like that. You can always watch the video again if you need some more information. I appreciate you being here. There is a video right up here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.